Learn how to live better and think better and do better and have better according to God's will and purpose for your life. Welcome to Table Talk with Tracy Marie. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to Table Talk. I'm Tracy Marie. Thank you so much for being with me today. You know what, ladies and gentlemen? I wish you could see me in this studio. If you could see the mistakes that I make, I'm telling you, you would crack up. I need to have, we need to have some bloopers in here. We need to do a bloopers reel because I have to laugh at myself for some of the stuff that I do. But anyway, you can't see me, but I see myself and I'm trying to tell you, I'm a trip up in here. But anyway, again, thank you for being with me today. I pray that all of you out there are doing well, and I pray that you have a smile on your face and you are starting your your day with the right mind, the right attitude. And I want to talk today. This is an awesome show, and I'm excited about it. We are going to topic of the show today is get it together, church. Get it together, church. And we are going to be talking about that thing called competition in the body of Christ. It is something that literally has become accepted. It's acceptable now in the body of Christ. We call it entertainment. You understand? And because we dress it up and we put the Christian in front of it, that means it's good. It's a good thing. You know, we we supposed to compete against each other and see who the best is. Really? Listen, the whole purpose of the body of Christ is that we are to be unified through Christ Jesus. We are unified and brought together for a greater purpose for the kingdom of God. And we can't do that when we're competing against one another. And you know what I'm talking about. Child, that girl can sing. Mm -hmm, She sounds better than so and so. I don't know why they don't give her the solo because you know she sing way better. Or, child, you got to come to my church. I praise teams off the chain. Or, you know, I don't do the Kojic thing. Mm -mm -mm. We Pentecostal. We don't do that Baptist and that Kojic stuff. And all that kind of foolishness that the enemy has used for generations to keep us divided. Don't you get that? Don't you understand that together? Why do you think God wants us unified? Because we are powerful when we come together. But when the enemy breaks us up because we allow men and women or just people to create all kinds of of their own personal private agendas and schemes. And now we have denominations and we have all these different traditions. And, you know, my church does it this way. Your church does it that way. Well, my pastor says this way. Your pastor. If we all serve the same God and we're reading the same word and living according to it. I don't care what your pastor said. What do God say? Huh? Open up the word of God. What does God say? Because he has the final say. But we're going to be talking about competition today. And um, we're also, my guest today is out of Atlanta, Georgia. She is author and motivational speaker, Lisa Dixon. And we're going to be talking about competition today, that spirit of competition. And we're going to be talking about her, her new book entitled Free. But again, this whole competition thing you know we have gotten to the place where a lot of Christians are so you want to be entertained you understand so your flesh is always being gratified and then again what the enemy has done is he tries to dress it up by putting Christian in front of it Christian entertainment but if Christian entertainment is compromising the word of God then it ain't Christian nothing it, 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 I don't care what we do, anything that we do in whatever spectrum or platform we are on, it must line up with the word of God. If it goes against God's word, then it is not of God. I don't care what kind of Christian you put in front of it. It is not of God. So we are either unified or we are either competing. We got pastors competing against one another and prophets competing against one another and singers and musicians. And that is foolishness and it's not of God. And we're going to talk more about it. But before we do, you better stay tuned 
because this is going to bless you. And I'm going to tell you something else. Let me tell you, real people and fake people will never get along. And I'm going to tell you why. Real folk going to tell it like it is. Fake folk going to tell it how they think it should be. And there is a difference because there's only one way and that's God's way. Hello. So <laughs> we're going to be right back back after this commercial and we got some awesome spoken word with mariah ivy and we have a brand new song by kai a pineda don't you go anywhere we're going to be right back with some more table talk do you have a christian business or organization are you looking to advertise look no further here on Table Talk Radio, we offer professional on-air ads for those who want to promote business, church, or community events at reasonable rates that fit your budget. So go to TableTalkRadioShow.com or call 267-341-7480. That's TableTalkRadioShow.com or call 267-341-7480. Excuse me, church. Regardless of formation, however the building may appear, we the people are the church, right? So without stepping out of place, I would love to ask you all a question. And you don't all have to answer at once, not even to be too candid, but I would love it if you allowed this rhetorical concept to marinate in your spirit. Maybe after a couple of minutes, some odd seconds, you can understand it enough to answer it if that's okay with you all. Church. So I was wondering, how long will we fight each other until we supposedly make it to heaven? Now, I know that sounds crazy, but really think of that. Like, how long will we continue to fight each other until we supposedly make it to heaven? See, that question has been weighing heavy on my heart and in my mind. Playing tug of war with the two concepts that were Christians and we love, or that were Christians were supposed to. Daily, substantially reading the word, feeling as though your cup is overflowing, but we only live what we want to. See, it's no longer subliminally given, it's clear. We come to our place of worship, dressed up in our bedazzled suits, sitting on the first pew, receiving and taking in everything our past is a preacher without first inspecting the fruit. And because we fail to do our own research, we leave the building spewing rotten tongue because half of these pastors are preaching tradition instead of preaching truth. I'm sorry. Maybe I didn't lay the foundation enough for you. With the utmost respect, I appreciate and applaud every pastor, every bishop, every leader, every minister who feels they have received a calling from God. Meaning you've inhabited and committed yourself to fulfilling the task of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Taking the word and in furtherance decomposing it so that you might build the kingdom of God by reaching, saving, and adding an additional life. And that simultaneously goes hand in hand with preachers pastoring through different denominations. So you take a Pentecostal, Apostolic, Baptist, Disciples of Christ, etc., and you stamped it into this crooked system of religion as the new face of overall foundation in which your church stands, or the right way in which we are to worship and inherit the promises of God. Now, I could be wrong. However, my mental fixation based upon facts says that these two concepts are on opposite sides of the spectrum. We say we're leading people closer to God, but how the church is and how the church should be are simultaneously at odds, I've been noticing. I've been noticing through the incorporation of man-made laws within our churches, so many people are straying away from the type of life that God wants them to lead. And through the continued legacy of tradition, we feel like it's some people on earth we gotta please, you don't. See, it's the difference between upholding standard and then flipping scripture to justify a humanly ways. Church, we have truly lost our way. We're trapped in division and don't even know it. Blindsided by Satan's attacks and we continuously fall into the depths of his traps every time we refuse to love. So we close the doors on God's face when he shows up at one of our Sunday morning services. But we allow Satan in every time we can't find unity. And that we constantly contradict ourselves every time we get up there and so effortlessly sing, I pray for you. 
You pray for me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's. I'm totally convinced that the spirit was just high and you were just really high off the filling. Because even though religiously speaking, we categorize ourselves into different denominations. First Corinthians 12 broke it down so perfectly. How can we even begin to call ourselves all a part of the body if you feel like you're the only side that's working? What is a hand without an arm, a foot without a leg? How is it that we're still making way in an empty stomach when a heart ain't been spiritually fed? How do we keep our grip right, our fist tight in the battle of life and death we conquer no fight when I believe my way of interpreting scripture is right and we believe our way of living is right? What stumps me every time as a go-getter for God is that we're so divided and stuck within our own understanding Yet we all seem to have the same goal, and that's to lead people closer to Christ. How? Not only are we in a spiritual warfare, but it's kind of sad that even in the midst of this earth that we knew wouldn't last, we as Christians can't even stand together because we're too busy judging the weight of each other's bags. I'm still trying to grasp and fully understand why we as a people are so judgmental. We become complacent in our positions, putting ourselves on pedestals, and then we get so high and mighty off of rules, principles, and procedures. Like you were never a wretched sinner. Like God didn't take you up out the dirt and mold you into something greater. So where we got this ignorant idea to take our opinions and use scripture to just it, even if it wasn't in the Bible, I would never know. But while you're out there preaching your sermons, while you're doing your evangelistic ministry, while you're judging folks based off the clothes they're wearing and closing the doors on people who are really in need, while you're giving to the less fortunate to gain recognition, think you're doing a good deed, God said, die to yourself. And understand that if it's not unity, it's not me. So church, I've been wondering, how long will we fight each other? until we supposedly make it to heaven, that is my question. And I'm sure you all have answers, but instead of answering with your words, answer with your actions, answer with your lifestyle, answer it through demonstration, answer it through change. To every pastor, every leader, every person who considers himself a part of the body of Christ, understand that if you refuse to love, and I mean love, if you refuse to love in the absence of denomination, in the absence of appearance, in the absence of color, intellectuality, or past decisions. If you refuse to love, period, the idea of paradise, the kingdom of God, the doors of heaven will be as foreign to you as an unborn child is to living. You will never know if it's not unity, it's not God. So church, I challenge us to do both. Let's become one. Creation waits to give you praise. For you are holy. For you are God and God alone. The one and only. You made the stars, the moon, the sea. By your hand they came to me. And then you took some time for me. And I can't explain it. But you take my breath away, want to explain it. But I don't know what to say, cause I, I stand in all of you, amazed by all you do. My heart wants to confess that I am speechless. I stand in all And I, I stand in 
And we are back with Table Talk. And I have a special guest in the studio today. Her name is Lisa Dixon, and she is out of Atlanta, Georgia. And I wanted to tell you guys um, a little bit about how I um, – someone introduced a video to me that Lisa did, and it was going on – it was all on Facebook, and um, I checked it out. And what I what drew me to her was her realness, and she was talking about something that is going on in the body of Christ um, and it's rampant right now, and it's that thing we call competition, us competing against one another. So we're going to be talking about that today, and also we're going to be talking about Lisa's book. It's called Free. I read it. It's an awesome, transparent testimony of what the Lord did for her, everything she went through, and what God delivered her from and set her free from. So this is going to be a good one. Lisa, how are you doing, girl? I'm Awesome, Tracy. How are you? I well, you see, I'm doing. I'm doing that. You know, we just had a conversation before the before we started recording this, so you know, I'm doing good, and I'm excited to see what the Lord is going to do. So I tell you what, um, before we even get into the interview, um, why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself? Well, today I am a 45 year old, born on 26 year old. <laughs> <laughs> Author, minister, motivational speaker, mother of three wonderful ch- children, wife. Um, I just I love the Lord. I'm real. Um, the book I wrote is about my life where God has brought me from. Um, I, I, I I like to tell people that I in the room. I will not be ignored. I cannot be ignored. Um, I am I, I am a a weapon of mass destruction for the Lord. Praise God. Yes. Most definitely. Okay, well, I tell you what, let's just get into it. Um, talking about the video that you did, um, that and you were so on point with it, um, what inspired you to reach out to people through that video about unity in the body of Christ? Uh, I just got tired of the phoniness, so-called Christians saying one thing and doing another. You know, the Bible says that we're not islands unto ourselves. That means mm-hmm. we need one another to fulfill our purpose. And I just got so sick of sitting in places hearing, you know, people talk about, oh, you know, I believe in networking, I believe in connection, I believe in kingdom. And then I see them stabbing people in the back or I see them being selfish and treating people bad. And, and I, I'm so sick of, of people coming into the church with a common cold in the spirit. And we're sending them out with HIV in the spirit. We're killing them playing church instead of living the same. And so I felt like, you know, all the posts we put out on Facebook is one thing, but I wanted people to identify with who I am as a black woman and as a woman who loves God. I want them to, I'm not hiding behind Facebook. I'm calling y'all out on, on, on national air. You understand what I'm saying? Right. I want to, from me to you, it's time to get right. Yes, most definitely. Now I'm going to ask you, what have you yourself personally experienced with other Christians regarding the whole competing against one another? Oh my God! I mean, as you can as you can tell, I'm I'm real hype. I'm real, I'm real <laughs> passionate about what I'm for real. Whatever I believe, and I'm passionate. I mean, right? People, you know, maybe some people can take it as aggressive as, as aggressiveness. I don't know, but I've had people come to me and tell me, oh, you know, well, you know, you, I still see too much hood in you, or you know, you talk too much, and you know, it's not my fault because when I when I go someplace, you know, there's an authority in my voice because I know who I am, and you don't. But let me just tell you about this one story that's gonna. Just just going to share light on all the stories. Okay. A few months ago, a sister contacted me through Facebook. She wanted to have me on a show. You know, I'm like, okay, you know, not a problem. She had me on a show. Everybody that she has on a show, she promotes them. She has a picture of them and a picture of her, or she'll have a picture of them with their bio. Okay. Well, from, from mine, she just had a, first of all, let me just go back. First of all, I had to contact her and ask her, well, did you get my picture and my bio? And she said, oh, yeah, I'm about to put it up now. And she did post one picture, but um, on on her Instagram and on her Facebook page and everything, she just got a big green block sticker of me that says gang awareness. Wow. No picture of me, nothing that I – even to, right now to this day, if you go to her page, it's pictures of all her guests who she's had on the show and little bios about them. And for mine, it's a, a gang awareness sign with nowhere right. with my name on it. Right. You understand what I'm saying? And I talked to her, like I'm talking to you, and I talked to her about how we got to unify and we got to, you know, just said another. She's like, I agree with you, and I don't like this. And then she do that, you know. So, I mean, I've been told that I intimidate people Mm -hmm. because I come across 
strong. I can, well, to me, this is confident. When I was a vice lord in the, in the world, I was confident for the devil. So mm-hmm. why would I come on God's side and not be even more confident? Because I got a real army behind here. me now. You better speak that thing. I know that's right. I know. You know, it's amazing to me. People, people get saved, and then you want to get soft, and then you want to oh. lose that, that passion. You want to lose that, that thing that God gave you that makes you who you are, that makes you unique. That's right. And that is so powerful. If you were doing it for the world, you better give double to the Lord. I totally agree. You better agree. say it. And I let totally me, let me, agree. Let, let me share this with you. I was telling uh, uh, my bishop yesterday. I said, have you ever looked at people who come over from other, other countries who have who uh, what is it called diplomatic immunity? Mm-hmm. When they break the laws of getting speed tickets, they don't. They look at the police like, please, you got to get out of my face. You have no authority over me. They're confident right. because they know that they have immunity. Well, why don't we look the devil in his face when he attack us? Like, you got to get out of my face. Do you know who I am? That's right. We wouldn't walk. It wouldn't be so many mean Christians, so many mm. bitter Christians, if we really knew who we were. And so as I, the, the, the more knowledge I come in or just about how much authority I have, I get just a little more confident because right. last year I had a tech. This year I got a tech with three clips. You understand what I'm saying? That's so right. the more ammo that I allow to be released in my life, the more confident I get. Right. But you know what? And it's something you said about Christians walking around being bitter, being angry. I'm going to tell you something else. When you walk under religion and you follow that religious mindset, that's what that's what that's where it's going to get you. When you oh, yeah. are truly free in the Lord and you're not bound by your past, by your mistakes, but you are free in Him to grow and not held accountable to man's laws, but you follow the principles of Christ. That's when you are truly free. But I'm going to tell you another thing. Another thing is is that some people go into their walk with the Lord expecting something, but looking to give nothing. Mm. And what I mean by that is when and we're talking about competition, my thing is this. You've got some people that you see. This is the thing. And I, the, I was just thinking about this like a week ago. A lot of people want to make Christ their product for their own personal agenda. Mm. You understand you what right? I'm saying? Yeah, so what, so right. this is the thing. They come to church with a hidden motive. you got a hidden agenda because it's all about you. And that's where we get that competitive spirit. It's not about you wanting to bless somebody. It's not about you wanting to help somebody. It's not about you wanting to bring something to the table. It's about what can I get? What can you do for me? I'm all right. about me, myself, and I. It amazes me. And, you know, it's funny to me because a lot of people in the church, especially the black church, but it's all over in the, in the body of Christ, people believe, well, if I bless the past, I'll be blessed. So you'll sit there and you'll take your last 20, your last 50, your last 100, give it to the pastor who may not really need it because you believe you're getting a blessing. But if it's somebody poor and needy, you ain't got it. That's right. Well, that, that's a form of godliness, too. I mean, that's the word. You know, honestly, and, 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 and a lot of your listeners may not agree with this, and I ain't racial. I love black people. I love myself. I think black don't crack, you know. Get to my grave. Right. However, the enemy knows the greatness that lies in our people too. So he wars amongst us more than he do anybody, and that's why there's so much division and competition between us. Because a lot of African Americans have the crab and the bear mindset. Right. You know, I'm not going to let you get ahead um, before I get ahead. That's Some right. of them may help you once they they might help you once they get ahead, but they refuse to let you help you get ahead before them. And to yeah, me, that says a lot that. about you. That's right. I'm seeing this. Out. Listen, when I'm hearing Christians talk about their brand. This is my brand. What do you mean your brand? Your brand is Jesus Christ. That's our brand right there. So when I hear people talking about, you know, oh, well, I'm competing, you know, I'm going to go compete on this contest because uh, this, for the best singer, or we got pastor of the week, and it's just like we're allowing the enemy to continuously divide us. Commercialize. Us, that's right. He's, instead of us unifying. That's yeah. right. Instead of us being unified, to listen, when are, and I'm going to ask you all out there, when are, when are you all going to get it? When are we as a body of Christ going to realize the word of God talks about this? Paul talked about this, that individually, separately, we can't do anything. And the little bit that we think we can do is going to be very limited. We need each other in order to do the work of God, period. And there is no, you know, this this big person and then the little person. We are all needed because this is the crazy thing. Think about it. You may not even pay attention to that little toe right there at the end of your foot. You don't pay. And it's, to you, it's irrelevant. But that, I promise you, let that thing get cut off. Okay. Let that thing get cut off. 
and the pain will be right in there. That pain will affect your whole body. Have you ever, all right, okay, some people get that toothache. Have you ever had that pain that's in one place but affects your whole body? Oh, yeah. Oh, that yeah. is that is what it is in the body of Christ. When one thing is missing, it affects the whole body. And so I just speak to you guys out there. We speak to you and tell you that competitive spirit, that I against you, I'm better than you, I can do it better than you, that is ridiculous. And guess what? It's not of God, and it God is, is not. not pleased. God is not pleased by that. He wanted a family. He created us to be a family. He created us to help each other and bless each other. And you know what, while we're going, since we're we're going there, let's talk about your book, because we were talking about it before the interview started. And I'm going to tell you, I love the book. Um, like I told you earlier, um, when I, I couldn't put it down, and I literally had to get to go to bed to get ready for work the next morning. And like right after work, I said, this is what I'm going to take the rest of the time to read the rest of the book. It was transparent. It was honest. It was real. And I mean... I mean, it was just a good read. The way it was written, it was just awesome. And just to see how the Lord has just transformed your life, you know. And like you said, the the and girl, you was bad. I'm going to tell you, you was a bad mamma jamma back then. Honey. <laughs> you were. So you ain't got no choice to be on fire for the Lord. I'm trying to tell you because you was tough. I'm like, dang. I almost wanted to say, I wish I could have seen her just to see her in action because this girl, girl was dangerous. I was a beast for the devil. I, I tell you, I was a beast. I was, you know. And I mean, I, I used to have this motto. I remember um, somebody was like, you know what, somebody going to kill you because I was so, you know, so loyal to being a vice right. lord. I was like, that's okay when I dime down with my palms in the air. Wow. You know, I mean, I would have bust tail wide open, but I was, I was so sold out. So I can't, I have no choice but to be sold out for Christ. But let me tell you what's so funny. I've never liked to read. And so when the Spirit spoke to me and told me to write the book, I was like, that cannot be. He must have missed this one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. You, you, you do yes. know this is me, right? Yes. And mm-hmm. so I, I didn't know where to begin. I was like, you know, I'm just seeking God. I'm seeking God. I'm, I'm like, God, what do I start? He said, start from the beginning. And I'm like, okay, well, when I was two, when I, you know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. being incarcerated, that was the beginning for me. You know, God loved me so much that he sent me to prison. And so that's why my book starts mm-hmm. off. I starts off. In 1994, I was incarcerated because mm. that's where I died and was resurrected again. And I remember that part in your book, too. That For what you just said, mm, that is powerful right there. You said, God, he He helped me and he protected me by sending me to prison. Because I remember in the book you were saying how the Lord had revealed to you that had you not been arrested, had you not been tried to go to prison, you would have died that same year. Yeah. I went to prison August of 1994. Um, mm-hmm. and I was I was looking out the window one day, and he showed me a vision of me in the casket. And he spoke to mm-hmm. me and said, oh. "I saved your life. Had you not come here, you'd have been dead by Christmas." Mm-hmm. And I just hit the floor. So prison was my road to Damascus. And the now, thing about ooh. it, mm. go ahead. No, I'm just saying that's powerful. I just wanted to tell the audience that you got that's that is so powerful right there, because a lot of times we are in a place and we don't understand why God has that's right. us there, and you're thinking that He's punishing you, but you don't even understand that He's protecting you, He's keeping you, and it may that's why God says that you, we have to trust Him because it's not going to always look. The Word of God tells us to lean not to our own understanding because when we try to see it through our eyes, it doesn't look right. We don't. Right. understand it but God is trying to show us that if you trust me I'm doing it for a reason maybe I removed that person out of your life for a reason maybe I put you in that place over there for a reason maybe I'm allowing you to stay right where you are be alone for a reason I'm not letting you get married I'm not letting you leave the marriage I'm not letting you do this I'm not letting you start the business I'm not let it's, it could be a reason that God is protecting you we always talk about God keeps us from dangers seen and unseen well, if you don't see the danger, it's because he's kept you from it. That's right. Well, so and, that and not, right not, there not was only, powerful. One of, and, and this is one of the things I tell everybody is everybody needs a, a road to Damascus trip. Yes. Everybody. Because when you get a road to Damascus, Damascus experience, it's like you come face to face with God and he show you all that you're not and all that you should be. Right. And so when I begin to write the book, I mean, when I say it was just flowing, and so I'm just like, okay, then I graduated high school. I had some junior college when I was incarcerated, but mm-hmm. 
um, the sister who I had edited my book, you know, I'm thinking, I'm, I, I let it on the door. You know, I'm not smarter than a fifth grader, so I'm going to need for you to go gentle. She came back to me. She was in tears. She said, oh, my God, I love the read. She just said it was such an easy read. She said the um, only thing she had to fix was a few punctuations. She said, Lisa, right. it, was, it was written well. And so I prayed for a title, and I was reading the word one day, and I remember almost falling asleep, and my eyes tuned in on the word free with a question mark in the Bible. Right. And I never could find it again until I began to doubt. When I began to try to raise the money to get the play, I began to doubt because God showed me the play. He showed me the movie. And I, mm -hmm. I began to doubt, and I'm like, well, God, I'm having a hard time raising the money. And I'm reading the word, mm -hmm. and I ran across the word free with a question mark again. Right. Those were the only two times I saw it in there. And it was like mm -hmm. God was speaking to me saying that I gave you the vision, I'll give you the provision. You just right. trust in me. And so I, I know that my, my testimony is, is speaking to everybody. Even if you didn't live the life I led, it's letting you know that we serve a real God. Yes, we do. And, yes, we, we and, do. and, and one of the things I, I, I preach, Tracy, I tell people just like this, people, people have asked me, well, you're not ashamed. You're not embarrassed. I said, why should I be embarrassed of her testimony? Her and mm -hmm. I are two separate people. I know that I'm born again, so I use her testimony to bless and encourage other people. She has no power and no authority over me. That's right. That's right. And why, oh, that's just one of the things I don't understand. You know how I many people go to church and put on a, a totally separate face than the real face that they have? They put on a, they put on a, you know why? Because you care more about what people think than what God thinks. Well, people because are caught up into how things appear. And not how things, how things oh, my are. gosh. And what do the word of God say? God says people look at the outer man, the appearance. He said, but I look at the heart. That's and right. that's what we're missing. You want to be set free? you got people that's been going to church most of their lives and still bound. Oh, yeah. Still bound. Still struggling in the same areas. Getting worse instead of getting better. And you're wondering why. Because you're keeping up appearances. Because you're more concerned about what people see you as than who you really are. That's right. Girl, let me tell you. Okay, well, let me ask you because time is, I mean, I tell you, I, I told you, I knew it. When we were talking, I said, this is going to be a good one, and I knew that because we're already near the end, but I want to talk about your book. I want to, um, I want you to tell people how they can, first of all, purchase the book. It's well, an okay. awesome read. Let me just tell them a little bit. It's basically okay. about um, Lisa's personal testimony, her coming from a family that was, in, I mean, rooted in gang life. And I'm talking real gang, I mean, real gang life and all the stuff that comes with it and just her awesome testimony. And when you read it, I'm trying to tell you, it's going to blow your mind. It's a phenomenal read. And it'll just, it'll keep you, it'll definitely keep your attention but I don't want to give too much away, but when you see how the Lord just changed her life, blessed her in such an amazing way, how can they get the book? Well, you can visit www.areyoutrulyfree.com. That's no abbreviations, A-R-E-Y-O-U-T-R-U-L-Y-F-R-E-E.com, areyoutrulyfree.com. And you can order it from there if you would like to book me to come preach. Or come speak. I don't just, you know, just preach. I can preach heaven down now, praise right. the Lord. But, right. but I also go to high schools and, and speak, um, women conferences, men conferences. Uh, wherever, wherever the Lord leads me, I have a word for the masses. But let me, let me warn everybody who's listening. Do not book me if you are religious or you cannot handle the truth because I only come bearing truth. Mm -hmm. If you want mm -hmm. to be empowered, set free, encouraged, uh, um, Get, get greater tools of, to put in your arsenal belt in this war that we're in, book me. My phone number is 678 Or again, you can hit me up on Facebook up under Lisa Dixon at VIXON or my website, www.areyoutrulyfree.com. Okay, and we're coming to the end, Lisa. we got a few minutes left, and I just want to ask you, would you like to say anything to um, to our audience out there to encourage them or whatever the Lord is placing on your heart? What would you like to say? Well, I would like to say to everyone who's listening, be real, because only thing only thing's gonna last is what you do for Christ. Stop stop being so concerned with how things appear and be concerned with how things really are. Become transparent and truly listen. Before I, before I leave, I really want to give y'all this. 
stop being so selfish and having a crab in the barrel mentality because if you help someone else through their door in their room, God will create a door for you in their room. All of our purposes are tied up together. You need me and I need you. Keep that in mind. Mm. And then I guess I just dropped the mic because there's nothing else to say after that. Yeah. That is absolutely correct. And um, Lisa, thank you so much for being with me and being with the audience today. I would love to have you back. Um, there were some things we were talking about earlier before the interview, so I would love to have you back in the near future. And I'm just going to be praying for you. I know God is going to open up those doors. Whatever God called you to do, you're going to do it, and you're going to do it well. And it's well, going to be anointed. Know. Go ahead. Let, let, let me let me just say this. You do know I have a show also that comes on on Sunday. Yes. Um, go ahead. Tell the audience about the show. And my, my show is called Going In, where no subject is off limits or taboo. Um, right. We talk about everything from is domestic violence tolerated in the church, should mm. birth control be taught in the church, why women don't support each other. Mm -hmm. um, whatever topic that you want to talk about, we can talk about it. If okay. you want to be a guest on the show, and woman of God, I'm going to have to have you on my show so we can go in. Amen. But it's Amen. every Most Sunday definitely. at 7 o'clock. Okay. All right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, you have all the information, and um, I'm going to be uh, posting her book and her information um, when the interview airs so that you can go to uh, facebook.com slash or forward slash Table Talk Christian Radio, and you can see the information there as well. Lisa, again, I want to thank you so much for being with me, being with the audience, and I look forward to us getting together again and doing this again. Me too. Ladies, Thanks for having me. You are more than welcome, sister. We'll be right back with some more Table Talk. I truly enjoyed myself with Lisa. We continued talking even after the interview was over. I love talking to real people. I do. I just love it. You know, I always say I'm allergic to fake. So when, when I'm around fake people, I start to itch. I can feel it. I love a person that has been transformed and changed by God and um, are just open and real about it and just real in their spirit, their personality, everything. I love that. So, Lisa, thank you so much again for being with me, girl. I had a, a ball and just an awesome time talking with you. And you know what, guys? I looked up the word competition or to compete. To compete means to strive to gain or win something by defeating or establishing superiority over others who are trying to do the same. Did you hear me? Something by defeating or establishing superiority over others who are trying to do the same. Okay? Then I went to the Word of God. And what does the Word of God say? The Word of God says in 1 Corinthians 1, chapter 1, verse 10, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. And this is what I'm going to say to you. If you allow the enemy's tricks to work and you allow the enemy's tactics to entertain you, you you're basically on the side of the enemy it doesn't matter how good it makes your flesh feel it doesn't matter how uh, you know entertaining it is if it's not lining up with the word of God it's not right and if it's not bringing us together to unify us then it's not of God I don't care about the pastor said it the bishop said I don't care if it doesn't line up with the word of God then it is not of God and if it doesn't bring us together and unify us then it is not of God so I'm telling you right now competition is not of God so I, I know a lot of y'all out there, y'all watch y'all Sunday best and y'all watching all these other shows and stuff that be on TV. And listen, if it's not bringing glory to Jesus Christ and bringing glory to God, then guess what? What is the purpose? The word of God tells us to go through the highways and the byways and we are to spread the gospel and the truth of God. It doesn't matter about us. We must die daily so that Jesus Christ will be uplifted so that he gets the glory God gets the glory from our lives from our example from our walk from our talk that's how God gets the glory it ain't about us it really isn't and the only thing we should be sharing is the truth of our testimony the truth of our lives the truth of our struggles the truth of what we have overcome and give the glory to God because if it wasn't for God where would we be we would not be delivered we would not be healed we would not be set free but by the blood 
blood of Jesus Christ. So I just encourage you out there, listen, we have to stand up for the truth of God's word. We have to stop getting caught up and wanting to be entertained all the time. And we got to stop getting caught up in all this foolishness of divisions and denominations and competitions. And that's, if it's not unity, then God is not in it point blank bottom line oh it can entertain you if that's what you want to be you want to be entertained but i'm gonna keep it real i don't want anything entertaining me that compromises or goes against the word of god period so a lot of us we all say we want the promises of god but how can you obtain the promises of god if you're not living according to his word to obtain the promise so Listen, I hope something was said today that blessed you, that encouraged you, that maybe opened your eyes. Let that light bulb go off over your head to say, wow, I never knew that. You know, if you want more information about Lisa Dixon's ministry, her book, um, if you want to know more information about the guest on our show or the vision of this show, Table Talk with Tracy Marie, please visit us. You can visit us at tabletalkradioshow.com. You can also visit us at facebook.com forward slash Table Talk Christian Radio. You can always send us some messages messages let us know if we've blessed you or you know maybe you have an idea for the show that you would like us to talk about or just let us know if one of our guests that came on really encouraged you or did something that blessed you because it's a wonderful feeling to know that our personal testimonies or our personal struggles whatever it is that we've overcome is blessing and helping and inspiring and motivating someone else to grow closer in God and to trust him so listen guys again tabletalkradioshow.com or facebook.com forward slash tabletalk christian radio i love you all so much and don't forget about the event for salvation army if you're interested make sure to send me a message inbox me i will definitely get back to you um also i want you guys to make sure to stay tuned and meet me at the table for our next guest adrian e bell and the topic is going to be are you wife material? Uh-oh. Mm-mm. <laughs> you got a lot of women out there. I want to get married. I'm ready for a husband. <laughs> I don't know. Is that husband ready for you? Are you wife material? Mm. This is going to be a good one. Adrian said, Tracy, don't even send me no questions, baby. We're going to do this. I want, I, want to be, uh, I want to be surprised when you ask me these questions. So you know this is going to be a good one. So... <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us today, for being with me today. I pray something that was that was said, blessed you, encouraged you, inspired you, motivated you, and caused you to think, to maybe change your way of thinking if it's not the right thinking. Um, you know my motto, everybody, is always my hope is that you live better, that you think better, that you do better, and that you have better according to God's will and purpose for your life. And until next time, I'm going to see you when I see you.